Hi everybody, Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring. We're going to go over study tips. So I actually have a list of study tips that I'm going to show you on my screen in a moment. And we're going to go over what works and what doesn't and why. So this is coming from somebody who tutors students all the time from day one to board exam prep. And they either tell me if they passed or failed. So what actually works and what students have said has worked for them and why, but also from somebody who took the program also, I've graduated and I had very high marks in the 80s and 90s, depending on the class. Pharmacology was probably a little bit lower, but we're talking 80s. We're not talking barely passing, right? So these are going to work for you. I'm going to tell you which ones will work for you and why, depending on your personality and depending on your kind of life situation, okay? So let me share my screen here. So this is also in my blog. So I will leave the link for you guys down below. You can also see that on the website. If you go to dentalL.com, there is a link there for all of the blog posts. If you want to print this out, save it to your phone, tablet, whatever you want to do. So tip number one, and some of these study tips I might not even agree with. So we're going to go over those in a second too. So number one is called active recall. Have you heard about this one? Comment below. I'm curious if you've heard of any of the ones that I'm about to talk about and which ones have worked for you and which ones haven't. You'll be able to help other students kind of decide what they want to try to. So active recall is after you go through a topic, you then basically try to recall what you just learned or what you just read without looking. This is number one because this is actually the exact thing that I did in school before I knew it had a name, okay? So if you check online, it says, why does this work? So active recall strengthens memory retrieval and helps with long-term retention by forcing the brain to actively engage with the material. This is so true. So this is what I did in school. I would literally have my PowerPoint up there and like on my... I don't think I even used my cell phone at the time. So this was probably a laptop or something, or it would be printed out depending on, you know, who the teacher was. I, I would go through each slide, read it. I would actually read through the entire PowerPoint at once. It probably took like 10 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, but then I'd go back and practice this active recall. I would go back, read one slide and then cover it up or just simply put it away and then try to recall what I just learned. This would take time though. I might have learned, you know, one line from that slide, but then I'd look at that, that slide again, either on paper or on my laptop. I would read through it again and then put it away and then try to recall what I learned. After the third day of doing this for maybe a half an hour to an hour every day for that specific PowerPoint, I was able to go through every single slide without even looking and be able to remember what I had learned before. So this not only helped obviously with the memory, but I was able to retain the information. So this is number one. Number two is spaced repetition. So you study material over increasing intervals. So one day, three days, one week. This works because spaced repetition leverages the brain's ability to retain the information better when it's reviewed multiple times spaced over time. I teach this to my students along with active recall. So that's why this is number two. What I teach students is when you know you have a quiz or a test coming up, you probably have multiple quizzes, right? And multiple tests. So let's just say you have three over the span that week. I suggest studying test number one, so class number one on a Monday, but then the second day do class number two, and then the third day do class number three. But then now you're on to the fourth day, go back to class number one and study that material. So see how you're studying material over time, but you're not studying for nutrition day one, day two, day three, day four. You're studying nutrition day one, and then maybe day four, you retain the information better. And this has been proven. Number three, the Pomodoro technique. So I had actually posted this in my Instagram a couple weeks ago. So this is study in short bursts, 25 minutes followed by a five minute break after four sessions take a break why this works so this will reduce burnout 
This will enhance focus and maximizes productivity in shorter periods by breaking study time into manageable chunks. This may or may not work for you, okay? So this is one where I wanna tell you why it might work and why it might not work, okay? So many students, actually 90%, I'd say, use this technique where they like to study for 20 minutes or 30 minutes then they take a five minute break to get a snack and then they come back for another 30 minutes this works for them because they said exactly this they feel like they're not just studying for three hours and they don't have a life or they feel like they're almost studying too much or have to retain too much they look forward to that quick five minute break and that quick five minute break is enough for them to feel like okay i have to go back and study some more because i just took a break i feel good whereas if you're doing the opposite and you're studying for three hours at a time you're going to be exhausted maybe the last two hours you barely retain the information because you're so exhausted so you only really studied for one hour but you're wasting your time by trying to study for three hours. So this technique, the Pomodoro technique, may or may not work for you. Try it and see what you think. Personally, this did not work for me. I felt I would be studying for let's say 30 minutes and then I would take a five minute break, but that five minute break turned into a 10 minute break and then a 20 minute break. And then I'd be like, oh my goodness, I just took a 20 minute break. I'm gonna go study now for two hours to make up for it. So I just simply couldn't do it, but try it, it might work for you. Number four, teach what you learn. So explain complex topics to a classmate or even to yourself. So teaching reinforces your own understanding by making you process the information in a different way, which aids retention and highlights knowledge gaps. So this is very popular. I remember doing this in school. A teacher had recommended we do this. So anytime, I forget what class this was for, but anytime we had an exam coming up, she would say, okay, I'm going to separate everybody into groups of like four or five people. Everybody is going to go over a different module and you're going to explain it to us by tomorrow, that module that you understand and now studied. So we're all kind of teaching different modules to other people. This does work if you have other people to study with. I always prefer to study alone. Personally, I would just get too distracted if I was studying with other people, but I have students tell me they have to study with other people. They learn so much better. And as you can imagine, this can really save so much time because other students are going through other modules. You're helping them save time because you're going through a module or two that they're not doing but you're explaining it to them and then when it comes to the the quiz or the exam when they ask a question based on any of those modules you can almost picture your classmate teaching it to you and you know the answer they can picture you teaching them your module and they know the answer and you save so much time so this works if you have people to study with number five how many are there there's nine so we're almost there you guys so practice questions, I love this. So test yourself with practice questions and past exams. So this is an effective way to assess your understanding, apply the knowledge and prepare for the exam environment. I have practice questions for all of my students in any tutoring that I do offer. Even if I'm teaching a class at the end, I'm going to ask you practice questions to see if you truly understand. You might think you do, but then if I ask you a multiple choice, question do you understand it in a different way not just having to memorize what you learned so i do love practice questions i highly recommend them number six mind maps and visual aids so create diagrams charts and mind maps to represent on paper or or on the computer relations um, relationships between concepts so this helps in organizing information making it easier for the brain to process and recall during exams Personally, mind maps and visual aids never worked for me. I would spend more time mapping everything out, making it, it look pretty, um, making diagrams, charts. Personally, I've just spent so much time doing that. It didn't work for me. But every student always tells me they need to see something to be able to study it and retain it. So maybe I'm the oddball here where 
mind maps and visual aids didn't work for me. You know, even something as simple as a textbook. People would always tell me when I was in school to just highlight important important topics. Well, I'd be highlighting the entire chapter. So how is that helpful? Or I would take the textbook and rewrite it um, in a way that I understood, but that would take twice or three times as long. So how is that helping me? But other students swear by it. So I'm curious, comment below, do mind maps and visual aids work for you? I would like to know. I'm curious. Number seven, break down big topics. So divide large subjects into smaller, more manageable parts and tackle each one step by step. This works by chunking larger concepts into smaller sections, makes studying less overwhelming and helps you absorb the information in a more structured way. Well, this is true. So basically you would take a large topic like pharmacology and break it into manageable parts. Okay. And this is what I do inside all of my board exam prep courses, any PowerPoint or PDF file that I have, I don't just simply rewrite the textbook because that's not helping you. I teach medications in one PowerPoint. I teach how the body works to process the medications in another one. So I divide it into smaller subjects for you so it's more manageable to study. With teaching videos, PDF files, practice, mock exam practice, tests, all of that, it works. I highly recommend it. Number eight, stay consistent with study schedules. So set a fixed study schedule and stick to it, even if it's just an hour a day. This helps to build routine, minimizes procrastination, and allows for steady progress without cramming before exams. And this is so true, like a, a study hack for you. I tell all of my students, be consistent as best you can, but this doesn't mean being 100% perfect every day. Okay. I think I even have another YouTube video just about consistency and what that actually means. So you can study for two hours every day or study for six hours every day. Or if you're tired, study for just two hours that day, but then save the six hours for another day where you have more energy and you're ready to go. But try to stick to a schedule like you're going to study every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but then you have the weekends off. Try to stick to a schedule. I believe in this, but life can get in the way. So don't be too hard on yourself if you're sick for three days and can't study for three days, but those were the days you had allotted for your studying. Don't be too hard on yourself because you're just going to stress yourself out more. You need to take a rest when you need it because then you'll get the energy back quicker and you'll be able to study the next day. Okay, so stay consistent the best you can but take breaks too and don't be so hard on yourself. Last but not least, a healthy lifestyle. I know this may sound corny, but it's true, you guys. I definitely know as I get older, I'm not 19 anymore. If I eat a pizza for dinner two nights in a row, I don't feel so good. I'm more tired. I feel sluggish. If I'm not drinking enough water, I get a migraine. I wouldn't be able to study if I had a migraine. That entire day would be a write-off. I would be in bed trying to just go to bed early because I'm in so much pain, right? Um, and if I feel sluggish, well, you might be studying for three hours, but you're only really retaining an hour until you basically fall asleep and have a nap, right? So try to eat healthy, drink lots of water. Um, all of this together really, really helps. So I really would like to hear from you guys. Comment below. Let me know what you think about these study tips. This is all in a blog post of mine. If you wanted to like save the actual file, you can do that. If you're a student of mine, um, either in the Dental L Student Academy or any board exam prep package, you have the link to the blog post as well. If you want the full document, just send me an email. I am happy to send it to you. Um, but I think I should have it in the blog post. I'm going to actually add it. It's not there yet, but I'm going to add it. So if you just want to keep this for your records, you can. Okay. So how did you do? Any questions, you guys, let me know. Studying effectively is so important, but I can't stress this enough. Just find what works for you. What works for you might not work for your partner or what works for me might not work for you. But once you kind of find what works for you, that's the best life hack, study hack, student hack you can think of it will just serve you so well in the long run. So let me know you guys have any questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.